Samsung's newest S Pen Toting Beast has been unveiled at the January Unpacked event. That's exactly 11 months after the announcement of the Galaxy S23 series, it seems Samsung has been growing too eager to launch its flagships before the typical 12-month cycle is up. So what are we getting? New processor? Sure. Some design facelifts? Definitely, with a titanium frame to keep up with the times. A bit of a camera module shuffle has the zoom cameras changed up a bit, but we still end up with four cameras on the back like before. And we now get to see the Galaxy S24 Ultra go completely flat screened. There's just ever so slight arc at the edge of it, so it fuses into the frame seamlessly. Samsung has been reducing the age curve over the past few years. If you are still a fan of it, it looks like the Galaxy S23 Ultra may be your last chance to get a phone with an age screen for a while. The good news is that we do expect Samsung to keep selling the S23 Ultra as a reduced cost model over the next year. But back to present times, Samsung has launched a trio of Galaxy S24 device. And of course, you can expect a Galaxy S24 review and S24 Plus review as soon as we put them through the full slew of benchmarks. All hail Titanium, the new ruler of the flagship phones. Joking aside, we have a Titanium frame on the Galaxy S24 Ultra now, following in the footsteps of Apple's Pro iPhones. It's a soft touch mate and it looks clean and stylish, pretty cool. We don't get a lot of benefits in terms of weight. Samsung also completely removed the curvature of the screen. The soft edge design has been getting less and less prominent over the years as it appears consumers simply prefer for a flat display and Samsung has been testing it slowly and surely making the curves less and less prominent. On the Galaxy S24 Ultra, it's just a slight wibbling into the frame of the phone for a seamless transition. But the rounded side frames are back, so it still feels like the Galaxy S23 Ultra. The Galaxy S24 Ultra colors are going to be titanium grey, black, yellow and violet. The Samsung.com having a few extra ones, titanium green, blue and orange. As before, we have a 6.8-inch Dynamic AMOLED 2X screen, Samsung's best screen tech that has been awesome for years now. There's more brightness headroom with a peak brightness of 2600 nits that only matters when watching HDR content and under very bright conditions. But hey, it's there. It's still QHD Plus resolution and it's still an LTPO panel with variation between 1Hz and 120Hz. Samsung has been doing that with the Ultra models for a while now. Overall, we expect very little surprises here aside from the screen going completely flat. Okay, we are back to having a 200 megapixel main camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and then two zoom cameras, a 10 megapixel zoom camera with a 3x telephoto lens and 50 megapixel one with a 5x lens. You may have noticed the 5x camera replaced with 10x lens of yesteryear. Apparently, Samsung is going to be using the high res 50 megapixel sensor and some AI trickery to achieve the same or better results with it. The Galaxy S24 Ultra will be available with a brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 mobile platform for Galaxy all over the world instead of having an Exynos variant as in years past. And yeah, that's the full name apparently. Samsung and Qualcomm are continuing their partnership and the Snapdragon in the Galaxy S24 phones will be a bit more powerful than the Snapdragon other phones get, or at least slightly overclocked. For what it is, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is an extremely powerful processor, no doubt, one that enables the AI trickery that the S24 can do with pictures and live translations. We recently reviewed the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro, which has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and it crushed benchmarks. Of course, we have to test Samsung's optimizations before making a blanket statement here. Naturally, the S24 Ultra will launch with Android 14, with Samsung's One UI 6.1 reskinning the operating system to an unrecognizable level. Not to say there's bad, One UI has grown and evolved over the years to not only be feature-packed but also user-friendly. So long as the user does spend time with the phone, there are quite a lot of things to do with it, like split-screen screens, which you can save and recall at any time floating your windows, taking long screenshots or nothing on your screenshots with the S Pen. 
Ah yes, the S Pen suit comes with even more features like controlling the phone with air gesture from the stylus, using it as a mouse cursor when hovering and of course writing and drawing. With One UI 6.1, we get the following AI features, live translate during a phone call, chat assist in Samsung keyboard, generative photo editing, circle to search with Google, note assist will summarize notes, format messy notes, summarize voice recordings from recorder. We are curious to see if these AI features will expand throughout the year and if they will trickle down to older Galaxy phones. In another record-breaking statement, Samsung now pledges to 7 Android OS updates and 7 years of security patches. If we are getting this right, it means the Galaxy S24 Ultra will get Android 21. The Galaxy S24 Ultra will come with the same 5000mAh battery as before thus far, the Ultra flagship has had an ok battery life, definitely not bad, definitely not a record breaker but dependable for a full day. It also won't be pushing any charge speed limits with wired charging at 45W and wireless 15W. Samsung's stereo speakers have been quite good thus far, maybe a bit midi and a bit harsher sound at max volume. The Z Fold phones have been sounding great, which showed that the Ultra flagships still have a bit of work to do there, but special constraints probably play a role. We will see if the Galaxy S24 Ultra manages to improve in this area. As far as haptics go, the S24 Ultra we tried out felt pretty much like the S23 series, clicky, strong, responsive. Currently, our expectations for the Galaxy S24 Ultra are that it will be a very, very good phone with powerful hardware, good camera, and dependable battery. We don't expect some head-turning new features or improvements, so we are curious how far those AI tricks can go and how often Samsung will add new ones. That is to say, we don't think that Galaxy S23 Ultra owners will be rushing to upgrade to it, but it will definitely be a killer phone for newcomers. But we will see, we have to run it through our performance benchmarks and camera tests to draw a final verdict. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.